Innova created Future Collect in 2019 as a dynamic partnership programme to transform the culture of commissioning and collecting in Britain so that it better reflects the diversity of our society. Innova partnered with three national and regional galleries to commission a British-based artist from the global majority of African or Asian descent to make new work that would then be acquired into their public collection. Future Collect offers a model to shape the future direction of public collections, commissioning and curatorial development. This initiative provided a vital platform to ask questions about power, representation and the civic role of museums and galleries in the 21st century. Jade's proposal really stood out because she really wanted to engage with the first work that Manchester Art Gallery acquired. And this was a painting by James Northcott of Ira Aldridge as Othello, the Moor of Venice. This is a really important painting for us, partly because it's the first one, but partly also because it depicts a black man. Ira Aldridge was an African-American Shakespearean actor. He was really celebrated in his day. And so it's, really, it's always been really interesting to us that why is this the first picture? So um, Jade wanted to engage with that as a starting point to really exploring the new works that she was going to create. And it, we also wanted to put Jade's works in context with some works from our collection. So um, our curatorial trainee, Nikita Gill, who is now our assistant curator, she selected works from the collection that really have an affinity with Jade's practice or talk to Jade's work in some way. So she selected some works that are to do with text, because obviously Jade uses text a lot in her work. And she's also selected works that really look at the body and the black body. So we've been involved in the... BAM audit, which is the Black Artists and Modernisms audit, which was counting the number of works we had in our collection by Black and Asian British artists. The BAM audit said that we had uh, 67 works by 35 artists. Bearing in mind we have 46,000 works in the collection, it's, you know, it's worse than an embarrassment. And it, and, it, and it really felt like an urgency that we wanted to address. So with this project, it felt very, um, a very kind of sustained approach, I suppose. It's not tokenistic. We're going to buy that artist and that artist and that artist and really increase the numbers of works. The reason why this project was so important is because it was a really, it was about an artist having a long engagement with a collection and making new work that would, I suppose, live forever in the collection. Our commissioned artists were given an opportunity to develop their practice and to be collected and exhibited by a major institution, while also contributing to a wider public debate on collections and whose heritage is being preserved. In addition to the commissions and associated public programmes, Future Collect supported an early career curator at each of the partner galleries, as well as making space for Future Commons, a peer-led curatorial network. I think a lot of the impetus for Future Collect came about after the Black Artists and Modernism audit led by Sonia Boyce and Dr. Anjali Dalal Clayton. And it was sort of part of the remit from the beginning to look into the collection and see how well represented artists of the global majority were, how it was representing the local community and whether it was sort of serving the local community by adequately representing a diverse body of artists. When I brought up this idea of doing an exhibition of Prafila Mahanti's work at Hepworth, I think the initial reaction was interesting. When I talked about these works, everybody was like, oh, we've never seen these works. We didn't know they existed in the collection. But of course, I was like, that's, that's the problem here. And I think there was quite a lot of kind of pushing and pulling which had to happen before we got to a point where it was like, oh, actually, maybe you could do this exhibition. I think there was a lot of reluctance to commit to the idea of doing an exhibition at first. So, yeah, I think it, it was a bit of a, a process of gaining trust, but I'm really glad that 
I kept pushing. <laughs> Emmy's proposal originally was to create sort of sculptural glass pieces. Um, and I don't think we ever thought it would turn into the kind of immersive installation that, that she um, eventually arrived at. But that really came through her journeys through the landscape. And, and I think also her just growing in confidence as an artist, you know, what she can actually achieve, you know, <laughs> moving mountains, making mountains. Each artist was invited to test out their ideas by hosting two study days. This gave them the opportunity to share their research in a collaborative context. So much of the themes you engage with in your practice are about how museums collect and I feel like your work is really good at kind of like critiquing it and thinking about it in a, in a kind of um, anti-colonial way and how like how do you like do you feel that future collect does anything to kind of make the institution reflect on the yeah i think i think it does and i think it like when it comes into like collections also it's like you know who's been acquired in the past how much were those people paid and how were they able to like sustain themselves from that like following and also like what it means to be part of a collection also like the fact that you know you you have work that you know is being looked after for you for like however long that is going to be and I think yeah I guess like for like future brown babies to see stuff that's like by not white people also is really nice. Yeah being able to participate in those conversations on equal footing being able to yeah. intervene in like white dominant histories by having yourself permanently incorporated into the narrative, complicating it, making it difficult to get away with one way of telling things only. Yeah, for sure. The town of collection is um, is a hundred years old. There were twenty paintings that were originally given as a gift um, in 1923 to the people of Eastbourne. So the gallery was formed around that principle about it being for the people. Um, and over the years, the collection has it has expanded around primarily around the theme of landscape, but not restricted to landscape. Um, but that has been a constant thread that has run through the collection. It's a collection very much of its, of its time, and we want to make it of our time as well. And I think that's really important to keep a collection alive and to keep the momentum going with it um, and to reflect the period in which we live. And times have changed, obviously, from 100 years ago from 50 years ago when, when you know, the, the sort of white male curators were, were collecting for, the, for, this, for this place. Um, and I think, you know, that's made us reflect on what, what we should and what we can be doing with it. What's our ambitions for the collection? So I think collections have largely always been inaccessible, uh, particularly institutional collections. And I think there's a select few people who decide whether they, what gets shown and what doesn't. And I think to a larger extent that is still true, that is still the case. I do think things are changing though. Um, and I think that Future Collect is like a good example of how institutions can change their collection policies and how they're collecting. Um, but I do think that, you know, it, Future Collect is opening my eyes to ways in which other people can be involved in, in shaping collections, whether that be um, local community people, people who work within the institutional space that aren't necessarily curators. I think lots of people should have their say on what collection looks like. 
as it is a public collection, so um, the public should have their input. I have been in a continuous conversation with the stretch of coastline from Eastbourne to Bexhill-on-Sea since I was transposed to East Sussex from East London during childhood after a sudden death in my family. I return often, both in my imagination and in reality, because part of me is lost there. I am of this place, but not from this place, or is it that I am from it, but not of it? As I wander the roads and shoreline, I'm trying to retrieve myself, but in the endless back and forth, I have superimposed a present self onto a past self and created an intangible palimpsest outline upon blurred outline. So my work has a number of kind of iterations. So it starts as a piece of writing and then that writing gets um, transposed onto, another, onto a surface and then something happens to that surface. So I might be putting the, the paper in water uh, and then there's a residual kind of component that's left and that's the work, but it's all the work. So each stage of it is, is also the work. So I really love this idea that the, the work has had these kind of, um, kind of identities, I suppose, or moments of a particular state. And then what's collected is what remains. So in terms of the collecting principles around Future Collect and the, the kind of uncertain nature of the, what I might, what I'm going to make and, and how that might kind of, what state it's going to be in by the time the show ends, I think is really interesting. I have been questioning, um, I guess as part of my practice, like what is it? to be a curator and like, how do you care for objects? And I think that's quite hard to do when the object kind of disappears or disintegrates. And I think it also proposes a challenge for like collecting, like what does that look like? How do you also kind of like wheel it out in future collections? Like how do you put that out if the work is meant to degrade? So I think it's asking all of these really important questions that are challenging, I think, the institution, curators, and everyone who works in like arts and cultural fields. It's important to recognise that Future Collect, although it might appear to be a project, that it's actually really challenging the cyclical nature of the way in which collections have periodically collected artists of colour. We really want to see Future Collect as something much more expansive that doesn't just end with the project, but that the questions that we raise through the project in thinking about who we're collecting and for whom are continually asked by the institution, but also to recognise that museums themselves need to change in order for us not to ask this question again. Often we talk about the notion of care, and when we talk about care, often we're talking about the care of artworks and the care of the collection. All of the relationships across the three years of this project, that relationship between the curator and training and the artist has been really um, a very close one. So that was one of the great learnings actually for Innova as an institution, that um, when we talk about care, it's not only about the artist and the work, it's also about the care of all of the relationships that support that work to happen. One of the things I would definitely let go of is the burden of responsibility of representation for a curator and training of colour. Um, it's really important to understand that it's the institution itself that needs to do the work around thinking about uh, anti-racist practice, equitable practice and conditions for artists. And these are things which are not only like about policies, it's also about practices and processes. I think one of the things that I think institutions can do better is to just look at the artists that are around them, because actually those artists often want to support that institution. And sometimes we look elsewhere for an artist that we want to commission, and sometimes that artist is right on your doorstep. Um, so one thing I would definitely say would be to not necessarily to look to the centres 
in order to find the artist, your next artist that you need to commission. Maybe they're just right under your nose. So what is the way in which we can reimagine a relationship between artists, institutions, grassroots movements, communities? And I hope, my hope for the future of collecting is that, um, that it doesn't necessarily require these projects that actually there's already that expansive thinking within the institutions. And that is because those institutions are a better reflection of society as a whole.